All you want is to give your sister a proper funeral. It's been 70 days since the incident. And still, the hospital won't let you have her body, claiming that she could still be a biohazard. Meanwhile, their investigation is apparently no closer to finding the cause of death, let alone what toxic substance had leaked from your sister's body, and sent 23 of the doctors and nurses who had been trying to save her life to the hospital themselves, with so-called experts changing their stories by the day, key evidence mysteriously going missing, and even the leader of the investigation ending their own life. You realize that if you're going to have any hope of finding out the truth, you'll need to take justice into your own hands. Flashing lights sped through the streets as an ambulance raced towards Riverside General Hospital. Inside, paramedics fought to save the life of Gloria Ramirez, mother of two and late-stage cervical cancer patient. Her boyfriend had called the ambulance after she started having trouble breathing, but things were getting worse. Gloria was still awake, but she was becoming incoherent and her blood pressure was dropping fast. Paramedics wheeled her into the ER where medical staff jumped into action. But soon, staff began to notice some weird things about Gloria, starting with an odd fruit garlicky scent believed to be coming from her mouth. And the situation only grew stranger as they worked to save her life. Gloria's heart was beating too fast, causing her low blood pressure. So, Dr. Julia Gorchinsky tried to regulate the heartbeat with a shock from the defibrillator. However, Gloria's shirt was removed to apply the paddles. They found a strange oily sheen on her skin. Even stranger, when nurse Susan Kane punctured Gloria's skin to take a blood sample, a pungent chemical smell seemed to fill the air. Furthermore, once the blood had been drawn, she and Dr. Gorchinsky also noticed strange off-white crystals floating in the syringe. And then, suddenly, Nurse Kane swayed and fainted. Dr. Gorchinsky lifted the syringe near her nose and breathed in, only to begin feeling lightheaded herself. She made it out of the trauma room and to a nurse's desk before she, too, fainted. As other members of medical staff continued to fall ill around them, Dr. Umberto Ochoa made the call to evacuate the ER while a skeleton crew of staff remained behind, fighting to save Gloria's life. Once everyone was out, the hospital declared an internal emergency. Ambulances were redirected to other unaffected hospitals, and hazmat crews were on the way. All the while, Dr. Ochoa and team provided medication and oxygen to Gloria, and tried to keep her heart pumping with defibrillators. Hazmat units entered Riverside General's ER at roughly 11 o'clock p.m. and began sweeping the building, testing the air for any gas that may have caused the events that evening. It wasn't the hospital's first brush with hazardous materials causing detrimental health issues, let's say. The hospital had experienced a number of run-ins with hazardous materials in the previous few years. In 1991, a potential hazardous gas leak from a sterilizer caused two employees to seek medical treatment. In 1992, a hazardous algae was found growing in the hospital's water reservoir. In 1993, the first floor ER was flooded with sewer gas from a drain. And then, in 1994, just two weeks before Gloria's visit, a 52-year-old cancer patient found his room filled with fumes so noxious that he vomited and had to flee. A nurse claimed this was caused by other nurses dumping things down the drain and into the plumbing system. So, all in all, not a great track record. But you know who does have a good track record? PDS Debt, of helping people get out of debt. With all the terrifying things that can happen to someone, one of the scariest has to be debt. The worst part is that it doesn't matter where you go, even if you vowed to never leave your home again. Nothing, save maybe a global nuclear disaster, will stop debt from catching up with you. If you keep making payments on your debt and it refuses to go down, don't worry. Today's sponsor, PDS Debt, is here to help. Everyone with over $10,000 in debt qualifies, no matter their credit score. PDS Debt's program rolls all of your payments into one low monthly payment so you can pay off the debt while saving thousands on interest and fees. There have definitely been times when I wish I knew PDS Debt was an option. Could have paid off my debt from certain uh, panic purchases a lot faster. PDS Debt is offering a free debt analysis. It only takes 30 seconds. Head over to pdsdebt.com brew to get your free debt assessment today. But in this case, the hazmat teams didn't find anything, and the hospital even received a clean bill of health after independent investigations of the hospital. And yet, 23 staff members had fallen ill after some kind of gas had apparently filled the room. But where had it come from? 
Could it possibly have been Gloria? Tragically, the medical staff had been unable to revive Gloria, and after 45 minutes, she was gone. With the mysterious chemical scent seemingly coming from Gloria's blood, and the mysterious crystals that were floating in her blood, her body was sealed in two bags, then placed in an airtight aluminum casket before she was moved to the morgue. But the autopsy wouldn't take place for another six days. Until then, the hospital staff were left to pick up the pieces and wonder what exactly had happened in the ER that fateful night. When the autopsy was finally carried out, it was done so with the utmost caution. Working in a sealed cubicle made airtight besides an exhaust that filtered through charcoal to remove any possible fumes, pathologists wore hazmat suits with external air supplies to remove any potential risks to their health as they examined the body. The autopsy failed to reveal what had happened in the ER a week prior, but it did reveal one thing. Gloria had passed due to cardiac dysrhythmia, a fancy phrase which means an irregular heartbeat. This irregular heartbeat was in turn found to be caused by kidney failure. However, the autopsy only found elevated levels of acetone and no signs of anything toxic, especially not anything that might have caused the kinds of fumes that struck the Riverside General Staff. Without much in the way of answers, a second autopsy was performed a month later, on March 25th. This one found something else, evidence of an anti-nausea medication called Tigen that can break down into ammonia, but there weren't high enough levels to have knocked anyone unconscious. Not only were the autopsies not answering questions, the overall investigation seemed to be just raising more. After Gloria's first autopsy, County Deputy Coroner Dan Capito said that Gloria's passing had not been natural, a claim which he then reversed course on after the second autopsy, at which point he stated that her passing had, in fact, been natural. Alone, a new autopsy revealing new information isn't unexpected, but when later asked about the conflicting statements, Capito couldn't account for his first statement. But that wasn't where the oddities in the investigation ended, either. A month into the investigation, the coroner's office investigator in charge of Gloria's case took her own life. And later, the syringe that was used to take Gloria's blood sample was accidentally discarded, literally throwing away a key piece of evidence. All the while, the county refused to release Gloria's body. After all, they weren't sure if she could be a biological hazard, but that was little comfort to her grieving family. Over a month had passed since Gloria's passing, and her body still hadn't been released for a funeral, causing the family to grow restless. And the county wouldn't release her for a while yet. It wasn't until late that month, the week of April 22nd, that Gloria's remains were finally released to her family by court order, at which point the family paid for a third and final autopsy to be carried out by a privately hired pathologist. Unfortunately for them, the pathologist discovered that by then, she had decomposed too much to yield any additional evidence. There were no new answers, only anger. Speaking to the Washington Post, Gloria's sister, Maggie Ramirez Garcia, stated her belief that the hospital had taken so long in order to hide their own responsibility in her passing, saying, it takes them 10 weeks to say she died of natural causes. I honestly believe my sister may have lived if she hadn't gone into that emergency room that night. I don't know what the county is afraid of but we want answers. And the family weren't the only ones upset with how the county was handling the situation. Michael Baden, the former NYC chief medical examiner, made his own issues known with regards to how the investigation was going in Riverside. In a telephone interview with the Washington Post, he made his opinions known, saying, there's no way fumes can come out of a body and hurt people. That idea went out with the dark ages. This kind of thing gives death a bad name. Dead bodies don't make people sick. And with no real answers to be found for the mysterious outbreak that put 23 hospital workers in, well, the hospital, all sorts of theories started to come out of the woodworks. The coroner's office came up with one theory. It was the smell of death that caused the hospital workers to faint, ignoring the fact that Gloria was still alive when the team started to pass out. Then, the California Department of Health Services and OSHA both came out with their theory, mass hysteria. Their theory stated that when Nurse Kane smelled ammonia in the air and fell unconscious, it caused other staff to believe that there was something in the air, and the worst placebo effect around, their belief convinced them that it was real, and hospitalized 23 of them. 
Of course, that doesn't really track with the evidence provided. Sure, mass hysteria can cause some pretty serious symptoms, but it doesn't often put a doctor in the ICU for two weeks, then confine them to a wheelchair for another three months due to lung damage and knee degradation. Needless to say, this explanation didn't exactly go over well with the staff at Riverside General who were affected. Dr. Gorjinsky, in particular, sued for $6 million, stating that her career was ruined thanks to the events. And to be fair, you'd probably be pretty mad too if you suffered lung damage, wound up bound to a wheelchair, and then told that you just imagined it. There were other theories too, some less grounded than others, like the one that accused the hospital of being the site of a secret methamphetamine lab. There is, however, a more likely explanation. A dark secret, unknown to anyone. A chemical weapon was brewing inside her body. Remember that oily substance that medical staff had noticed on Gloria's skin as they tried to treat her? Well, that and the fruity, garlicky smell are both traits of a substance called dimethyl sulfoxide, or DMSO for short. DMSO was discovered as a byproduct in the papermaking process, but was also found to have a very interesting trait. It could be used to help transport molecules through the skin, and so was used to transport medication in products like skin patches. It also has been used by athletes to treat muscle and joint aches, was approved by the FDA to treat bladder problems, and is a home remedy for arthritis, general pain, and cancer. In 1965, DMSO was banned from further clinical trials and was recalled by the FDA due to tests that demonstrated it could ruin a user's eyesight after altering the eye lens in test animals. However, it has remained available through other means. DMSO can be found at hardware stores as a solvent and at veterinary stores for use on animals, and it seems to even be available in the body lotion section of Walmart, despite the image on the page clearly showing a warning that is to be used as a solvent only. But aside from its appearance and smell, where DMSO links in our case is what happens when more oxygen molecules are added to its chemical composition. According to a paper from the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, elevated levels of DMSO2, also known as dimethyl sulfone, were found in Gloria's system during her autopsy. A fun trait of DMSO2 happens to be that it appears as a white crystal at room temperature, kind of like what Nurse Kane and Dr. Gorchinsky saw in Gloria's blood sample. However, dimethyl sulfone is not dimethyl sulfoxide's final evolution. That would be dimethyl sulfate DMSO4. The Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory study proposes that the oxygen being pumped into Gloria and the other measures staff undertook to save her life may have continued the chemical reaction, adding another couple of O's to the DMSO2. And DMSO4 is a much bigger issue. It's a colorless, oily liquid that gives off a faint onion smell and is not only toxic, but also an honest-to-goodness chemical weapon used in World War I. It can cause a laundry list of symptoms, including, but not limited to, necrosis of the eyes and mouth, damage to the lungs, kidneys, and heart, coma, severe blistering, cancer, and of course, loss of life. In fact, of all the potential symptoms of DMSO4 exposure, only delayed kidney damage and death were not reported by the hospital staff, and here's hoping that it stayed that way. Plus, the researchers at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory even managed to duplicate the formation of DMSO4 under conditions similar to Gloria's in test tubes, meaning that as far as theories go, this one is looking pretty credible. But why would Gloria have had DMSO on her? Well, the sad truth is that she might have just been desperate. Gloria was young, but suffering from late-stage cervical cancer, and DMSO was a folk remedy to help treat it. Maybe she was in pain and just needed something to help, but based on the evidence on hand, it seems like she might have bought some DMSO and rubbed it into her skin. Gloria's family denied that she had used DMSO, and the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory paper does state that they only have anecdotal evidence, and that it's possible that her body could have created DMSO2 through another way. Sadly, the researchers were unable to get any more information because of the, quote, adversarial evolution of this case and the current legal ramifications. At the end of the day, we may never know the exact details about what happened that fateful night in the Riverside General Hospital's ER, but it seems like we have a pretty good idea. It's a tragic tale of a mother losing her life and a rare chemical reaction endangering 23 more. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to our channel. You'd be surprised to know how big of an impact your one sub has on this video's success.
Plus, we've got plenty more mysteries coming that you won't want to miss. So, until next time, thanks for watching, and hope to see you again soon.